Since the first players started to golf, they've been concerned with how far they hit the ball. And to this day, no matter how badly you're playing over a round, a large degree of pleasure can still be taken from simply hitting your driver further than your playing partners in any hole. Now that the stats are also crystal clear on how important driver distance is to lower scores, there's an obvious additional incentive for golfers to be aware of what factors most determine driver distance. Anyone who has played golf for any length of time, however, knows it is a game of almost infinite variables, and the number of elements that can determine how far you hit the golf ball are many and varied. These include your golf clubs, loft, shaft type, shaft length, etc., the golf ball you choose to play, the condition and altitude of the course you're playing on, and not to mention the wind, temperature and humidity of the day you're actually playing. With the advent of launch monitors in the modern game, we also now have data available for other things that we are today aware of that affect distance, such as club or swing speed, ball speed, angle of attack, smash factor, dynamic loft, club and face path angles, spin rates, etc, etc. The list seemingly goes on forever, and none of this touches on another often cited factor that determines driver distance, the age of the golfer themselves. But if you are serious about improving, and driving the ball further should be a key part of that journey, no matter what myths you may hear, it is vital that whatever time you have to spend in trying to hit the ball longer distances is focused on the key areas that will make the most difference. So in this video, we analyse all the key factors which affect driver distance, including the most important one of them all. While many traditionalists rail against the advance of technology in modern golf, one of the great things it has helped with is identifying once and for all which areas matter most when it comes to better scoring. And with all the stats now available, one thing is absolutely crystal clear. The long game is more important than the short game, and there is a direct link between distance and lower scoring, and therefore handicaps. Driving the ball further is a huge advantage, and given how little time amateur golfers have to play golf, never mind practice, it makes sense that they understand what makes the biggest impact on distance in golf. And with modern launch monitors, we are now able to identify exactly what has the biggest impact on distance when you tee it up in the golf course. As a whole, ball speed is the single biggest factor in determining the distance a golf ball actually carries. And a gain of one mile an hour of ball speed can increase drive distance by up to two yards, according to Trackman. To maximize distance, Ball speed then needs to be combined with the optimal launch angle and spin rate. But every golf swing is different and entirely unique to an individual player, so surely there is no one way to ensure everyone hits the ball further. That is true, and the answer for one golfer as to how they can potentially make adjustments to maximise their distance is indeed likely to be a different compared to another. That does not change the fact, however, that if you're looking for the one metric which has the biggest impact on how far a golf ball actually carries, you should be looking at your ball speed. And what do we mean when we talk about ball speed, and why does it matter so much? In technical terms, ball speed is the speed of the golf ball immediately after impact. But in more useful practical terms, it is essentially measuring how well a player strikes the golf ball. Good contact with the ball will translate to increased ball speed. Strike the ball badly, however, out of the heel of the club, for example, and your ball speed, and as a consequence, the distance you hit the ball will suffer. Other swing faults leading to glancing blows created by slices, hooks, or hitting down in the ball too much with the driver can also reduce ball speed and therefore distance. And as such, if you ever want to increase it and drive the ball further, the major factor to influence this will be to improve how well you strike the ball. To emphasize how poorly the average male amateur strikes the golf ball on average, Jacob Bowden, founder of Swingman Golf and considered one of the leading experts in swing speed training, cites the following stats. The average male amateur has an average swing speed of 93.4 miles an hour, which is almost identical to the average LPGA Tours Pro swing speed of 94 miles an hour. But while the former averages around 219 yards with their driver, LPGA Tour Pros average a total driver distance of 257 yards. That's an enormous difference of 38 yards with essentially the same swing speeds. And the main reason for this is the quality of ball striking LPGA Tour Pros achieve compared to regular amateurs. The average amateur is therefore capable of the same distances LPGA Tour Pros drive the ball, but is leaving all this distance on the table simply by virtue of their comparatively poor swing technique and consequently ball striking. 
So in short, the element which has the single biggest influence and impact in driving distance is skill. And according to Arcos's annual distance report based on its analysis of millions of amateurs golf shots, skill is twice as impactful as age when it comes to gaining or maintaining drive for distance. For example, they found that a scratch handicap 70 year old male golfer will hit the ball further than a 20 year old 20 handicapper. So while you may not be able to influence the clear link between reduced hitting distances and age, if you continue to work on your ball striking, you can hold off the effects of father time when it comes to driving distance for a long time to come. It would be great if golf were so straightforward. Be told that ball speed was the single biggest factor affecting driver distance, increase it, and as a result start hitting the ball a lot further, leading you quickly to lower scores and a better handicap. Unfortunately, golf is a very hard game, and as anyone who's played it for any length of time knows, things are never simple. Everyone's golf swing is a unique, complex movement that is highly difficult to repeat consistently well, and very different ones can be equally as successful. But one of the great things with the introduction of launch monitors into the game in recent times has been the ability of, for players and coaches across all standards of the game to measure and state clearly all the elements that affect driver distance. Driver distance is primarily affected by a player's ability to convert club head speed into ball speed while launching the ball at the optimal angle and with the spin rate, which then produces the best flight trajectory and roll to achieve the maximum possible carry and total distance. That may sound overly technical to some, but those elements, club head or swing speed, ball speed, launch angle and spin rate, are the primary components that affect the amount of distance you will get with your driver. And those are not the only numbers that are now available to golfers and coaches when using launch monitors to check on their game and find the reasons they are driving the ball the distance they do. Modern devices now also measure items such as attack angle, dynamic loft, spin loft, peak height, land angle, club path, face to path, spin access, etc. And if you spend too long looking at one, you may be forgiven for thinking that they simply make an already difficult game even more complicated. But what they do allow is for golfers to understand the precise elements of their own golf swing that are affecting their driver distance and then if they want to do something about them. A golfer's optimal ball speed, launch angle and spin rate are primarily dictated by club stroke swing speed and attack angle and an understanding of this data can help all players work out not what just affects driver distance in general but most importantly what affects the distance they hit their own driver. For example, if we took a look at this graph from TrackMan, one of the industry leaders in launch monitor technology, analysing the optimised numbers for an average male amateur with a club stroke swing speed of 95 miles an hour, we can see that as the attack angle increases, the optimal launch and spin for the golfer changes. This then results in a variance of ball speed of almost 5 miles an hour between the two extremes of minus 7 degrees and plus 7 degrees attack angle and a whopping 30 yards difference in distance. And just to emphasise how important these key numbers are when it comes to driver distance, just take a look at arguably the best driver of a golf ball in the world today, Rory McIlroy, and his launch monitor numbers when he did a test with me and my golf recently. By translating a very fast club stroke swing speed of 117 miles an hour into a super high ball speed of 174.1 miles an hour, while at the same time launching the ball at a near optimal angle of 14.2 degrees, he carried his driver an enormous 307.1 yards. His low spin rate of 2103 RPM then allowed him to roll the ball out a further 20.7 yards for a total driving distance of 327.8 yards. And that's before we even consider that his smash factor in this drive of 1.48 means that he is still more yards in the tank when he can push that number up closer to 1.5 with a more optimal strike in the ball. Comparing our driving distance to arguably the best driver of the golf ball in the world is probably not a healthy idea, but by looking at his driving distance and stats, what it does show us is that he is looking to optimise the very same numbers we should be. Therefore, any improvement we can make to our understanding of what our own club stroke swing speeds, ball speeds, launch angles and spin rates are, and how they affect our own driving distances can only help allow us to try and hit our drives further. All golf swings are different as we know and there is no question that your own swing is unique and while it is important to have an idea of what determines driver distance and the numbers and reasons behind why you drive the ball as far as you do we would always recommend getting a lesson or a fitting 
from a coach or expert club fitter if you really want to boost your driver distances. A good coach will use all these same launch monitor numbers to assess your game, but most importantly, they will have a detailed understanding of what they all mean and their impact on each other in relation to your own individual swing to let you make the best decisions on how to improve. They will explain why, for example, when you're using your driver, you should ideally have a positive attack angle, but when using an iron, it should be a negative one. Similarly, an expert club fitter will again be in the best position to use these numbers to make sure you are playing with the best equipment most suited to you. And if you find a good one, they will most likely give you a bit of a lesson at the same time as you're fitting. We hope you find this video useful. Please check out our other great videos in Golfing Focus. And most importantly, as always, enjoy your golf.